Hey everyone, today I am super excited because today starts my new build series for a 300 blackout upper. Now the series is going to be broken up into a few different parts, a couple different parts for the actual construction of the upper, and then another part for the actual function testing, making sure that the upper works, and running a few drills with that. Now the culmination of the series is going to be an accuracy test using a bunch of different types of ammo. I have everything from high quality match ammo from companies like Gorilla and Corbon, and also defensive ammo from the same companies as well as many others probably about a dozen total different types of ammo to test just to see what type of uh, results you can expect from different types of ammo out there especially since 300 blackout is still kind of scarce that way you know before you have to pay for any of that ammo you know kind of what you can expect at least through uh, the facts and barrel I'm going to be using so one thing I want to say at the start is the saying of garbage in garbage out is especially true when it comes to firearms so a lot of people like to hobby build their firearms and they also like to do so on a budget. Now there's nothing wrong with that. However, I do also think that there is a, a point of diminishing returns as far as budget versus quality. Now I chose the companies I'm gonna be using for a very specific reason. It's all companies whose products I've used before in the past and I've had very good luck with. I think it's exceptionally important that when you're gonna be building something, especially something you may be using for personal defense in the future, that you make sure that you use companies that you know you can trust your life to. Now one of the main companies you're going to be seeing in this build series is a, a company called Spikes Tactical. Now Spikes Tactical again is a company I've used a lot in the past. Uh, both of the lowers that this upper is going to be going on, both my SBR lower here and my pistol lower right here are both Spikes Tactical products. Uh, I've been using them for a very long time. I, I trust them implicitly. They're great if you want to do your own build and also they also make uh, very very high quality complete rifles. Uh, a few of my friends have the Spike Tactical Crusader, and those are one of the sweetest shooting factory rifles I've ever uh, had in my hands before. They also have uh, some integrally suppressed guns, like the compressors, which uh, are on my short list of dream rifles, because those things are super nice. Now, one of my favorite things about Spike Tactical, though, is some of their policies. So this is a policy that they share with companies like Barrett Firearms, uh, Bravo Company Manufacturing, who I'm also a huge fan of, and you see pretty much their grips on all my guns and the, their stock on my SBR there. They have a policy which basically states that they are not going to be selling firearms to any, um, any law enforcement agencies or government agencies located in states that limit the rights of the civilians. So basically if I can't sell this gun to the general population, then I'm not going to sell that to any law enforcement or government agency. And I think that's really cool because a lot of the sales for firearms manufacturers are to those law enforcement and other government type agencies. So for them to be willing to take that stand and stand up for our rights as citizens of the United States, protected by the Second Amendment, uh, you know, I think that's really great. So that's one reason I really like to support companies like Spike Tactical, BCM, and there's a long list of other ones. Now one of the other reasons I want to sh uh, use Spike's Tactical is I want to demonstrate to you something that I thought was really cool. So this was the first Spike Tactical lower I got. I got this probably two years ago or so, a year and a half, two years ago, and then my pistol lower I got maybe six months after that. I just got this stripped upper from Spikes Tactical. What I want to show you is the tolerances that a company like Spikes Tactical has. So again, these were purchased at least a year and a half apart, if not more. So definitely not in the same lineup uh, off the production line. However, the fit between the upper and lower is very, very good. Now, there's obviously going to be a little bit of play in just about any upper you get, but to me, it's well within the acceptable limits of that. Now, this goes for both the SBR lower I have here and that pistol lower. There's very good fit and finish between the, the uppers and lowers. So what I think that shows you is a company like Spikes Tactical's tolerances and their margins of error. I think that if this, you know, may maybe I just got lucky that this upper works perfectly with both these lowers, but there's a lot of companies out there where if you don't buy a, a matched upper and lower, you're going to be jiggling around all day long. And again, well, a little bit of play is not an issue. Once you start being able to jostle the whole thing around, you might want to consider paying a little bit more. So again, there are going to be much more budget friendly um, options for all the things that I'm going to be using in this build. But you really got to consider what's your life worth. If you're going to be trusting your life to this gun, you really want to buy quality. And just some other stuff about this upper. You can see that uh, it does have the T markings all along the uh, 1913 rail up there. So you have all those markings, plus you got the cool little spider logo, which, I mean, let's face it, if you can't look cool while you're doing your tactical stuff, then what's the point? And in case I didn't lay the sarcasm on thick enough for people, I'm obviously 
not serious there. So the other company that you're going to be seeing in the first part of this build series is Strike Industries. Now Strike Industries is again a company that I've used their products before in the past. One thing I really like about Strike Industries is they're constantly trying to innovate stuff. They're not content to just let the things that have been working for a long time remain that way. They're always trying to find that edge and find a way to make those things better. In some ways, I think they are successful. In some ways, they're not quite as successful as you'll probably see in some uh, future reviews of some of the products that I have from them. But at least they're making that attempt, and I really respect that. If no one is willing to take that leap to try something new, then we're just going to you know, hit a plateau where everything's going to be the same and we're not advancing anymore. So I really respect companies who are willing to do that. The other thing, too, about uh, Strike Industries is they come in at a very reasonable price point. So, again, you're still getting that quality, but you're not having to break at the bank in order to get that quality. And another thing too that's cool for people who are competitors out there who or who want to have a flashier type of gun, pretty much any of the accessories that I'm going to be using from Strike Industries are available in a myriad of colors. So if you want to be able to color stylize your gun with reds, blues, whatever, uh, you have that option with Strike Industries, which is cool for the guys who like to do that. Not, not, it's not for me, as you'll see all the things are going to be black, and in the future I'm going to be painting this rifle, so it doesn't matter anyway but it is there for those who want that. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this build. I'm gonna move the camera into a place where you can hopefully see better, and then we'll, uh, we'll start assembling this upper receiver. So one of the things I wanna mention real quick before I actually start assembling this upper two is how important it is to have the correct tools. Now I've assembled uppers uh, using very much makeshift tools without using a vise and all that, and I can tell you it's very difficult, it's frustrating, and to me it's not worth it. So. I think it's worth investing in the proper tools. So like this is an upper receiver block. This allows you to you know, lock your upper receiver into a vise without having to worry about cracking it or anything like that. Now these aren't always the cheapest things in the world. However, hopefully if you're in, into building your own ARs and all that, you have a group of friends that are also like-minded. So hopefully you can um, do group buys like we did to help alleviate some of that cost. And that way you have the tools available to everyone, You know, whether it be stuff like this, a lower receiver block, the correct torque wrenches, all that stuff. It's good to just have all that stuff accessible. Um, you know, this is very easy to use. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lock the upper receiver into this clamp and then secure it into this vise here. At this point now, I have my hands free to do whatever I need to do to work on this upper. All right, so the first part that I'm going to be installing is this Strike, uh, Strike Industries forward assist here. Now as you can see they've done some machining across the top of this and put a little bit more texturing to it so hopefully this will allow a uh, much easier use of a forward assist. Now in all honesty a forward assist is something I've rarely ever had to use organically but if I do need it I want it to be there and so having a little bit of texture will hopefully make it a lot more positive to use. So when you're installing these you want to make sure you see this little claw here and if I take the spring away you can see this little lip in here and that's actually what that retaining pin is going to be locked into. So you want that claw part facing inboard. Now as you can see I flipped my upper upside down so I have access to the little retaining pin hole uh, from the bottom. This is going to make accessing this a lot easier. And when it comes to the forward assist, this is something that's always been a pain in, in the butt for me. Every single upper I've assembled, this always seems to be the thing that gets me into the most trouble. So I can't emphasize the importance of properly preparing your tools. So this was the uh, original roll pin that came in the upper with the uh, spike sack tool, just their factory forward assist. This was the pin that came with the strike assembly. Now I tried doing this yesterday, unfortunately my battery died, but it was probably a good thing because I didn't take the time to properly prepare this pin and it started creating a bunch of issues. And if you can see that the pin is flattened out from where I was pounding on it with a, with a, uh, with a punch, what you really should do is, if you look at the top of this one, it's kind of been rounded out. I highly recommend just taking some sandpaper and giving yourself a little bit of a bevel there so it helps guide it in a little bit easier. And then what I also like to do is take just a little tiny bit of grease or oil and put it on here to hopefully make this go in a little bit easier. So to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my punch and then I'm also going to take an Allen key. Now hopefully what this Allen key will do is basically act like a slave pin. So I'm going to push in again making sure that claw is facing inboard. Get that lined up and then I'm going to take my Allen key and just stick it in from the bottom. That one's a little too big. 
to stick this one in right through the bottom. So the spring tension will hold that Allen key in place. So what that's going to do is it's going to free up my hands again so I'm not having to hold that in place to get this pin started. So I use the same exact molly grease that I'm going to be using for the barrel nut. Um, this, this stuff is like four bucks from my local auto parts store. I'm just going to get this thing started. All right, now there's a couple different approaches to assembling an upper. There are the people who will like to tape up absolutely everything to make sure they don't mar the finish. Uh, me personally, I recognize that this thing is a tool, so I'm not super worried about marring the finish. Plus, like I said, I'm going to be eventually painting this anyway, so I'm not going to be super worried uh, about marring the finish. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time trying to get this thing to look perfect. Uh, so from here, I'm just going to start pounding it in. I'm going to use a bigger punch just to increase my uh, <laughs> hit rate. And then once it gets closer, I'm going to switch to a smaller punch so that I can guide it in a little bit easier. So as you can see, once it hits a certain point, it's going to force that Allen key or slave pin out of the way. Hopefully this will come back, take that thing's spot, make sure you still have free movement of your forward assist, which we do here. And we're just going to tap this the rest of the way. Wipe off that surface, make sure it's nice and flush, which it is. And so now we have the forward assist installed. Again, we can make sure we have proper function, make sure that that cycle is just fine. And now we have what is normally the hardest part of the upper assembly done and out of the way. So the next part we're going to install is the dust cover here. So again, this is from Strike Industries. They took a little bit of a different approach here. And again, this is where I really think the innovation is cool. The, there's nothing wrong with the mill spec um, dust covers. However, I really like the attachment method for this. Now there's really, realistically not a whole bunch of reasons why you would want uh, a, a quick disconnect one, but this is a lot easier as far as switching uppers out and it's significantly easier to install. And you also have an adjustable pin here that's going to adjust the amount of tension required to actually pop this door open. Now, I don't know if you've experienced this on builds you guys have done, but I have definitely experienced where there is an excessive amount of pressure required to pop that dust cover open. And you don't really want that. You want it to be secure, but you don't want it to uh, impede the actual function of the rifle if it is almost impossible for that dust cover to open. You might induce malfunctions if you leave your dust cover closed like I do normally when the gun's not in use. So having that adjustable retention is a really nice feature. So as you can see on one side here, we have, it's basically a little uh, push pin, wrong side. Here it's just a little push pin, and that's what allows, if I can show you guys that, that's what's going to allow this thing to pop in and out a little bit easier. But really other than that, it's going to attach in the same exact way the other ones do. So you have this little spring down here that you're going to have to basically grab and flip around. Now hopefully I can do this pretty well on camera, but I'm just going to hold that in place just like that. I've So just so I can demonstrate better, if this is the forward end of the dust cover, you're going to rotate that spring clockwise to get that little tab out and then you're just going to hold that against the inside of the dust cover. At that point I am going to lock this front part into the upper receiver and then I'm going to depress that little detent to get it into the back part of the receiver. So as you can see it's held back there. Just going to push that down the rest of the way until it locks in, and at that point I can let go of the spring, and now I have a functioning dust cover. So, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. At this point, now my upper, assemble, upper is pretty much assembled. The only addition that I have left is going to be the bolt and the charging handle. So again, charging handle from Strike Industries. Uh, this one I have to say, so I, I'm a big fan of extended charging handles where you have this much bigger latch to grab onto out here. I'm a big fan of the BCM one, that's the one that I've used primarily in the past. But I will say that this one, I don't know what coating they put on it or what's different about it, but it definitely slides a lot easier just it out of the box or out of the bag where normally you have it really, really gritty and it tears a lot of the finish off. 
before it starts cycling smooth. That was not the case with this one. So you have this big charging handle latch on here and it's going to cycle nice and smooth right out the gate. You don't have to wear all the finish off before it starts functioning well. So uh, here the upper receiver itself is pretty much assembled. We just uh, we'll eventually put the bolt carrier group in at the end and at this point we are now ready to put on our barrel gas assembly and our hand guard which is going to be in the next video. Now one thing I neglected to mention about these dust covers is they actually have some pretty cool designs as I'll try to show you on here. If you, For those of you who like to put words or stuff on your dust covers they have one with the American flag put into it. They have these in both black and FDE which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so you have the capsule like the one I have. You have the standard one which is just a nice slab side and then they also have a don't tread on me with a little snake in the corner. So those are the ones currently available. I wouldn't be surprised if they add them in the future but uh, a really nice really nice dust cover to add to it. Not too expensive and it goes on super super easy.